Good morning. It is 9 a.m. and I would like to call the June 15, 2016 City Council meeting to order. Let the record reflect that all city council members and representatives are present. And if you would please uh, stand for a moment of silence for the city of Orlando victims and families, we'd appreciate that. And then John will begin the invocation and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we ask for your help as we try to share our individual and collective gifts with our community, to refurbish our intentions in a religious manner, in a regular manner, and to give of ourselves in ways that make a value difference to our families, to our neighbors, to our town, and to our nation. All these things we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. You're welcome. This morning we have two special proclamations, the first of which is Garbage Man Day, which is Vice Mayor Devine. Thank you, my pleasure. I love these guys. They do such a great job. Uh, proclamation, City of Punta Gorda, Florida. Whereas our communities, hardworking garbage men and women keep our cities sanitary and make cities and homes livable. And whereas sanitation professionals are a sign of a healthy city as they help protect us from contagion and make our world smell better. And without <laughs> adequate garbage collection services, many cities would be driven to a state of disorder. And whereas according to the Center for Disease Control, the eradication of many diseases in the Western world was largely due to higher public sanitation standards, including efficient garbage disposal. And whereas this year, solid waste haulers rank third on the list of the riskiest jobs in the United States. And whereas this June, we invite the nation to join us in celebrating trash collectors, dumpster haulers, and those who do the dirty jobs that we would rather not do ourselves. And whereas in recognition of their vital work, the city of Punta Gorda extends its sincere gratitude to the city's hardworking sanitation professionals. Now therefore, the city council of the city of Punta Gorda, Florida does hereby proclaim June 17, 2016 as National Garbage Man Day and encourages all citizens to recognize the tremendous contribution which sanitation workers make to our quality of life. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this 15th day of June, City of Punta Gorda, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor, uh, and accepting his ca uh, Rick Keeney. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Rick. Uh, I accept this on behalf of the sanitation division. We're a little short on employees this morning, so I was I was really hoping one would show up, at least one, but uh, they do, do appreciate that. Uh, they appreciate you, and uh, they enjoy working with you so much. And uh, uh, just, just a little plug, uh, uh, Ms. Devine had mentioned about uh, safety. Please, when you see them out there working, please slow down for them. Be careful about putting pokey things in the garbage can so they don't get poked or too heavy. And they, uh, they're always there working in the heat and the rain. So, so uh, they know that you appreciate them and they appreciate you. So on behalf of them, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Amateur Radio Week, uh, Council Member Wine. Uh, Rapke. Rapke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to do this. My father-in-law was uh, W9DAX in Madison, Wisconsin. So. Um, Proclamation City of Punta Gorda, Florida. Whereas the City of Punta Gorda 
has more than 170 licensed amateur radio operators, and whereas the Punta Gorda members of the Peace River Radio Association have demonstrated their value in public service to the community by providing emergency radio communications, and whereas these radio amateur radio operators provide their service free of charge to the community as well as to the world at large and are available to render communications assistance during any local or national disaster. And whereas these amateur radio operators will develop their emergency communication skills by participating in the Amateur Radio Relay League's Field Day exercise on June 25th and 26th, 2016. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda does hereby proclaim the week of June 9th, 19th to 26th as uh, 2016 as Amateur Radio Week in recognition of this important emergency preparedness exercise and calls upon all citizens to pay appropriate tribute to the amateur radio operators of our community. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this 15th day of June, 2016. City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor. And accepting is Tom, is it Mancuse? And, and Ron Farley from the Peace River Radio Association. I could just uh, still a couple of minutes, um, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Punta Gorda City Council. Thank you for your recognition of um, our Amateur Radio Week and Peace River Radio Association. We wish to renew our promise to you and the citizens of Punta Gorda to assist and be able to provide backup communications in the event of a natural emergency or disaster, as you uh, spoke of. Some people may ask, what is Field Day? Well, basically, it's the single most popular on-the-air event with over 35,000 amateur radio operators uh, nationwide and in Canada participating, and we practice our communication skills. Um, amateur radio responds to all different types of needs, and um, despite the development of very modern, complex communication systems, sometimes the more complicated they are, the more often they break down. So we're there to provide a uh, vital backup in real disaster and post-disaster situations. And um, I would like to um, personally invite you and all the citizens of Punta Gorda to come to the field day. And I'll leave some um, information with the um, secretary over there, this um, clerk. And I uh, would love to have you drop by. If you could come by um, maybe 1 o'clock on Sunday or Saturday, and we'll be operational to 1 o'clock on Sunday. So just drop by, we'll get you radioactive, so to speak. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, at the um, Punta Gorda Boat Club, right uh, down next to the tennis courts. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay, next introduction of Border Committee member nominees. If your name is in the running for a city Border Committee and you would like to take a few minutes to introduce yourself, now would be the time. Any board member nominees? Okay, seeing none, we will recess as the city council and reconvene shortly as the community redevelopment agency. Yes, we're ready. <laughs> I would like to call the CRA meeting to order. Let the record reflect that all officials are present. And we have citizens' comments on CRA agenda items, which would be one item, the award of an agreement to structural preservation systems for repair of leaks at the Harrell Court Center parking garage. If you would like to speak on that item, now would be the time. Okay, seeing no citizens comments, we will move into the item. Good morning, Mark Gehring, Public Works. Uh, 
presenting to you this morning on the Herald Court uh, Center parking garage. Uh, several months ago, we were notified by the tenants. Well, actually, it's been gone on quite a while, but most, uh, it really picked up its pace a couple months ago uh, of leaking onto the tenants. Uh, the, the new financial institution there uh, leaks right onto the manager's desk. It's got a, a constant drip onto his desk. They've had some other leaks there that were related to floor and plumbing, that sort of thing we've taken care of, but the, the leaking of the floor is what uh, we're here for today. What we found is that the, the beams that go across the parking garage, they're called uh, double T's, they flex when cars drive over them. In between them, they have what's called a backer rod. It's a piece of foam that goes in between the two concrete beams and then it's caulked. Um, that has uh, deteriorated um, to the point where it needs to be replaced. We called the original manufacturer, or uh, excuse me, uh, contractor that put those in when the building was built and he explained to us what needed to be done. Uh, it was roughly a $500,000 project. We said, oh my gosh, he's gotta be kidding us, you know. He's looking to make a buck here where he didn't make any money when we built the garage and now he wants to make all his profit. So we put together a project uh, that um, procurement put out on the streets, not detailing what this contractor had told us to do. We were kind of keeping that in our back pocket. We didn't let that out as to what he had told us had to be done. We expected him to bid and tell us that again, along with some others. So um, we put the bid out to be competitive for them to come and analyze what they felt needed to be done and recommend their, pot, their best solution. We've done that type of contract on several other projects. Uh, most recently, we did it on the uh, uh, roof of the uh, Cooper Street complex, and it worked out very well for us. We got what we thought was a very good um, system, cutting edge, um, with uh, the bidders proposing you know, what, what we were able to look at and decide to be the best solution. Well, we put this project out for bid and we got one bidder. We, that's not cer certainly not what we wanted. So we started uh, looking closely at their bid. We looked at other contracts from other municipalities and corporations that have parking garages that are uh, funded publicly where their bids are open you know, and we can find those on the internet. Uh, we looked at unit costs. We've looked at everything that this person has proposed. We called in his engineer and grilled him as to why certain things needed to be done. And we don't think if we put this back out for bid that we would have a substantial savings. And we're here today to answer your questions, get your comments on this project. So was their solution similar to the, the first one that? Identical, nearly identical, yes. Okay, Tom? Every time we only get one bid back on a project, I get heartburn. I don't understand why we couldn't have uh, assembled or, or got together the specific problems indicating where the, where the leaks were and then sent out a bid request for, for contractors to deal with those specific items rather than send out an, an RFQ that says just come fix the leaks. So I, I have a problem with that part of it. I, in my mind, I would have hired uh, an engineering firm to come and identify the sources of the leaks, accumulated those areas and items and, and come up with a solution to fix them and then put that out for bid. Kim? Uh, is that what you guys did? You, I, I mean, you're an engineer, so. We met with the engineer. contractor that originally installed the waterproofing system for the garage and he told us what needed to be done. We needed to remove the backer rod, scrape all of the uh, sealants off and reseal it, uh, basically. Um, to identify where the leaks are, the leaks are all over the building, every joint, different places. It leaks, um, the way the, the roof is, uh, all of the floors are sloped to the center. So the water that comes in from the window or from up above the other le uh, levels makes its way across the floor and goes to the center. We've had some leaks that were identifiable being uh, drainage type system, the system where the pipes come down and, and collect the water. Those uh, leaks were, we were able to address. The rest of the leaking, it leaks through here and then it runs over here and leaks and drips down somewhere else. So we, we weren't able to identify any particular spaces for those leaks except that it's the joints and the seams around the perimeter of the building. And um, What's the guarantee on this when they do it? What's it's about a five year product. Okay. 
Okay. And then it, does it have to be repeated? Yes. Or I mean, I've this had is some something experience with this, and it is, it, that's just what happens. I mean, this is you can try to patch and patch and patch, and you're just going to be chasing that water because water is going to find a way if there's, and I mean, it's unfortunate, but those kind of products do wear out. I mean, we were told by the original contractor that had we done a resealing of the entire building a couple of years ago, we could have pushed this off a few more years. Right. Um, but that would say, just to throw a number up there, $100,000 a couple of years ago would have got us two years down the road. But it, it's an ongoing cost that we're going to have to plan into our budget uh, for that building. Right. Is it appropriate at this time for me to make an amendment to this uh, uh, proposal? If so, I, I, I don't think we ought to be in the real estate business. I've said that since the time we voted six to one to build it. Uh, I hope I get a second to this, but I, I want to get out of the business. I'm going to vote for the, the, the results of what we have to do, but I would like to see this board place this building and the parking meters in a real estate hands and to get out of the business for the, for the city. A, a builder could get a contract for those buildings downstairs. Even if he wanted to, he could put parking meters in, make a fortune. So I move the, uh, that as an amendment to uh, the issue that we're discussing. I'll second. So we have an emotion and a second. Um, more discussion. Gary, I, I, still, I have a question regarding the repair. Uh, we put a, we do a half a million dollar repair. I would do in round numbers, obviously. Five, we have a five-year guarantee. Is that another half a million, or is that something less than a half a million? Five years from now? Yes. Um, if we properly maintain it through, we could probably get seven or eight years out of it, but we'll probably have to throw $100,000 or so of maintenance during that time. We've basically done nothing to the coding system since we built the okay. garage. So my, 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 I guess my point is, is if we do the repairs we're discussing now with the total resealing, the next major repair seven years from now is going to be another half a million dollars. Correct. So even if we put a hundred thousand dollars in and get two more years out, we've only really saved seventy five twenty five thousand dollars a year. Versus just redoing it every five years. And right. it's so we're we have an obligation because we have um, sure. we have tenants that we to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think we have a good point to consider. Mm -hmm. is, is this something that really uh, could be in our belly within the long term? I mean, yeah. so, anyway, yeah. that's, I just wanted to get, be clear about that. Nancy? Um, you know, I, I feel we have to take care of the parking garage. We have an obligation uh, for us to consider um, um, co-mingling a discussion about the sale of the parking garage with this, I, I feel is inappropriate at this time. I think the two are separate discussions. They may be related, but separate discussions. So I, I think to to um, co compound the matter, I don't think is is appropriate for us. Jane, um, as I remember, we have asked uh, the if we can't sell it before, and um, I don't know, maybe Howard knows whether or not we've ever had any luck with that. But we did say we would like to sell it, and that's that's history. But it's mm -hmm. what we did do. Right. Well, it was empty, and the market's kind of changed. So yeah, that's right. The timing is better now. We did discuss it. The CRA discussed it. However, the CRA also, at that time, stated that they wanted to have the parking for free. That's a policy call. So we can certainly, uh, I mean, obviously this is going to be a policy discussion. Somebody is going to, if you want somebody to pr purchase the parking facility and still maintain that the parking is going to be free, that's going to be interesting. It, it yeah, has to see be a lot of shaking heads. <laughs> I mean, that I, I, it I, won't sell. I think it, <laughs> I think it needs to remain our choice as to whether we want to continue free parking or not. And so I would I would agree with Nancy. I, I think there are two separate discussions, and I'm not inclined to to move ahead with at this point in time. I would agree too. It could be a future agenda item, and we could really get some more information at that time. So any other? I move approval of the. We already have a motion and a second. Oh. So are we ready to call that question? The motion and the second that, that, that Frank made with the amendment? 
Okay. We have a motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two. Opposed? Aye. 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 Okay. So now that motion failed. I and make a motion to approve the contract. I second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract. The award all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. So do we want to put this on an agenda? Were you in agreement for that? I, I would like to have further discussion on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you want it on uh, July 6th or would you like it on the when you come back from recess at the first meeting in August? July. I won't be I don't here feel. the first meeting of August. Now, the first meeting in August is the third week in August. I'm sorry. It's the third week of August. It's okay, August. that's fine. I'll be back the 12th of August. Okay, let's do it in August. That's fine. Let's yeah, do it in okay. August. Okay, so we will uh, we'll take our notes. we in July. I mean, I mean depends you, on what you have on in July. Yeah, and do you have to do, I mean, what are you, it's going to be a discussion. I don't know if you can... Basically, the historical conversation. Well, I'd like to go back and take a look at the history. Yes. Of, give us that. some time to look at the history of how it was discussed before. Mm -hmm. Some of you were there, yes. and um, and and give you the little bit of the history, along with the rest of the discussion. So, can you give us till the third sure. week in August? No, yeah. I, I don't feel that it's like an urgent matter. I think it's a good discussion item to always keep. Assessing. Our options open. Okay, so and we'll I'd do it. I'd like to see what effect, if we keep it, it has on the budget going okay. forward. Okay, we'll do that in August. Keep in mind that the uh, CRA <coughs> funds run out. The county commissioners uh, may not extend them like they did the, the last time. Oh, yeah, the CRA runs uh, uh, 2031 or earlier. Yes. Or earlier, and depending on whenever the debt is paid. Quarters of a million. Not enough said. Okay, so. <laughs> The August meeting, we'll have it as a discussion item. Everybody's okay with that? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, great. Okay, and citizens' comments on CRA items? Seeing none, we will move into commissioner comments. Nancy? Um, none today, thank you. Gary? I said more than my wife said I should. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay. No, thank you. Okay, we are adjourned. Have a good one. Thank you. We will Thanks. reconvene as the city council shortly. Karen, can we keep this in this red folder so it's always in here? Okay. First and second Wednesdays of July. I don't have another clip or I would clip it in there. Okay. okay, we are back in session and we have one public hearing, ZA 07 16. This is the first reading of an ordinance that I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Punta Gorda Code Chapter 26, Land Development Regulations, amending Article 8, Standards of General Applicability, amending Section 8.14H2, clarifying permitted location for a side yard paver or brick sidewalk, providing for conflict and severability, and providing an effective date. Good morning, for the record, Terry Tubbs, Urban Design. Uh, this came back uh, because when we had adopted the ordinance that allowed the paper walkway from the side garage door to the driveway, the ordinance didn't come right out and say where that driveway or walkway was permitted. This clarifies where the walkway is permitted. So do we have issues with some walkways or you just... just no, it, we just realized it when we got an, an application in shortly after it was adopted. So we wanted to bring it right back. Questions for Terry before we open the public hearing? None, thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on ZA 07 16, please come to the podium, state your name. You will have three minutes. This is a public hearing, ZA 07 16. Last call. Move to close the public hearing. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Move approval, ZA 0716. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to approve ZA 07 16. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, next we have a quasi judicial which requires swearing in of participants. Anyone who is going to be presenting evidence or testimony with respect to SE 02 16, please rise to be sworn by the city clerk at this time. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in today's proceedings? I do. This is uh, SE-02-16, a request for a special exception pursuant to Chapter 26, Section 16.8, Punta Gorda Code, by Brian Brunderman, agent for owners John and Patricia Salem, to allow a second detached single-family dwelling to be used as an in-law suite and a covered walkway to be constructed on a single lot as permitted by special exception per Chapter 26, Section 3.5 F13, Punta Gorda Code, instead of an attached duplex as is permitted per Chapter 26, Section 3.5 A2, Punta Gorda Code, on property addressed as 713 Royal Poncian, which is located in the General Multifamily Zoning District, GM-15, and is within the Special Residential Overlay District. Um, please, uh, when you come up to speak, uh, identify your name and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. For the record, Terry Tubbs, Urban Design, and I have been sworn. Um, this request came as a result of a resident who uh, wanted to have their uh, mother-in-law or parents closer to them. Uh, they were getting up in age. Uh, the property is zoned multifamily. Uh, multifamily structure could be built. Multifamily, by definition, is three structure or three dwelling units. Duplex, specifically, is as attached. Attaching two separate buildings by a, a covered walkway does not make them a single building. So the request did have to come forward as a special exception request. Um, I'd like to enter the staff report into the record by reference. Uh, the Planning Commission and staff did recommend approval of the request with some conditions. Uh, first, that the property cannot be subdivided in the future to create two separate lots. Second, that the principal use of the lot shall be a detached or attached single family dwelling. Three, no more than one accessory dwelling shall be permitted in conjunction with the principal dwelling unit. And four, the accessory dwelling shall be owned by the same person as the principal dwelling. Mm -hmm. So that would you know, prevent it from being split. The way the, way the lot is laid out, the, the original structure was built, set back from Royal Point, Siena. So that did not leave room for the lot to be split into two separate lots mm -hmm. and just build a standalone home there. <laughs> Questions before we open the public hearing? No. 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 no okay, this is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on SE02 16, please come to the podium, state your name, and that you have been sworn. Anybody to speak on SE02 16? Last call, SE02 16. Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Move approval, SE0216. Second. And do we need them to state with the conditions that have been with referenced? The, yes. Okay. With the conditions, with the recommended conditions. That's a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the special exception with the conditions as stated. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have a second, no, we have a resolution which does not require a public hearing. Um, yes. And do we normally, we don't, do we take public comment on that or not? Um, I think we probably should take some public, take public comment on it. But, uh, let me go ahead and, and open it by, it's SV-01-16, and this is a resolution of the city of the, excuse me, City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, declaring its intent to consider vacating those undeveloped rights of way lying in a portion of Section 7, Township 41 South, Range 23 East, and Section 12, Township 41 South, Range 22 East, Charlotte County, Florida, commonly known as a portion of Chastain Street, lying west of West Charlotte Avenue, and that portion of Charlotte <laughs> Avenue lying between McKenzie Street and Chastain Street, um, containing 30,706 square feet or 
0.70 acres and more particularly described in Exhibit A attached here to and made a part hereof, requesting a recommendation from the Planning Commission and fixing a public hearing here on. So, I'm sorry, the procedure would be for you to legislatively determine whether you want to consider vacating the road, and then there will be a subsequent public hearing to actually consider the vacation. Okay, so in the future there will be public hearings Correct. on this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah? If there's anybody who would like to comment on this item, SV01-16, come to the podium, please. Okay, seeing none, do we have any questions about the vacation? So we would be like, in that essence, giving them the land. Well, uh, not exactly. Technically speaking, the land actually belongs to the adjoining property owners on either side of the road. And it's, oh, okay. And it's, okay. And it's sort of, that ownership doesn't really show up on the tax, or, uh, but, but it is just right. ownership that's impressed by the easement. Easy. You're right, it's our easement. Yeah. On their yes, land. thank you. I have the same question, so, yes. And this really, is it germane to this? Maybe or maybe not. We have been discussing with the Baptist Church to coordinate with the Life Care Center that when they add the additional parking, eventually, we would like them to allow the Life Care Center folks to also be able to park there and relieve the burden on history. On a history park. Mm -hmm. I think yep. that's an excellent yeah. suggestion oh. and idea. Oh, so the Life Care Center is parking over at the history park? Yeah. Oh, but this has been going for, for a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and because the Life Care Center overflows. Since day one, it's overflowing. So mm -hmm. when we do get the library, we certainly don't want the library parking being taken care of and taken up by the Life Care Center, even though it is public parking. It will. We're trying to get, I, I know, but we're trying to get the Baptist Church and the Life Care Center folks together. We have reached out to them. So maybe uh, we'll have an update when we if you adopt this to move towards a public hearing, maybe we can have more discussion. The uh, resolution calls for the public hearing on July 6th, 2016 at nine o'clock. Okay. I make a motion that we proceed with that. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution and proceed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. So we'll be two readings on this. Eventually, vacation. One. Terry, I don't it's not an ordinance, so would it just require one public hearing? I'm trying to remember. I think it's just one. Or, I'm not positive with that. Okay, well, we're definitely having one on July 6th. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move into our consent agenda, and first I would like to ask if there are any items that council members would like to no. pull? I would like to pull item number C. C1? Yes. Renewal of the sulfide odor control contract. Okay, so we're pulling that. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay, uh, now there will be citizens' comments on consent agenda items only, which would include approval of the minutes, in, uh, legal department invoices, the sulfide odor control contract, uh, the EAR amendment with the public school facilities element, the modernization of the public safety communication center equipment, and um, a transfer of a sewer facility. Anybody like to speak on any of those items? Okay, seeing none, I will entertain a motion on the consent agenda without C1. Move approval. Second. We have a motion a second to approve the consent agenda without C1. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. C1, renewal of sulfide odor control term. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry uh, for the interruption. I needed to clarify the date that was advertised for the public hearing uh, is July 13th, not the 6th. And we'll correct that uh, typo in the resolution for you to sign. Okay. That's. I Thank you. Pull the file. I just wanted to make sure that the record was clear. Thank you. And that's for the vacation. Correct. And we just passed the consent agenda without C1, so I'll let you take it. 
Okay. Uh, the reason I uh, want to bring this up for discussion is in uh, was it 2011, the estimate for the uh, chemistry to provide uh, uh, odor control for um, uh, sulfides was 93,000. It is now $287,000, yet the, there's been no increase in the cost of the chemistry itself. Um, with the information that was given to us and the uh, uh, areas of expertise I have in this area, I'm unclear as to the value that we would be getting for those dollars, and I've asked uh, to uh, take a pause and uh, have the vendor come back to us to explain what those values are for, the, for those monies and uh, at that point decide or entertain whether we should look for alternate sources. Um, for, for the flow of 2.2 million gallons a day, from my expertise, I think it's a little bit high uh, unless there's some extraordinary value that's being brought to the, to the table for that. Hi, good morning for the record, Tom Jackson. Um, we have no problem and are happy to ask those questions and get those answers to you. Thank you. And we have time to do that? Uh, I because spoke I with live close by this, so I don't want it to really start smelling. <laughs> and I am very aware of that. Okay. Um, uh, I, Marion and I met yesterday afternoon, and yes, uh, we do have plenty of time to do that. And even if, even if it's, we have another postponement, she can ask for an extension of the contract, and we have plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. We're not, I'm not advocating that we turn off the chemistry until we figure out what to do. Okay. I'm just advocate, advocating that we uh, make sure what we, that we have value for what we're doing, or if not, to revisit it, but not without turning any keys off. Okay. Yeah, ab and that's understood. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good call, Gary. Okay, next we move into our regular agenda. So this would be the time for citizens' comments on regular agenda items only, which would be the purchase of a vacuum truck for wastewater collections division. You better stay. <laughs> Award of agreement for outsourcing merchant card processing service to Paymentis. The budget status update for utility, sanitation, building, marina, lot mowing program, PGI canal maintenance and gas tax funds. And then the discussion of detached pergolas and the SRO and the neighborhood speed watch program. So if you would like to comment on those items, now would be the time. Please come to the podium, state your name, you will have three minutes. Anybody? <coughs> okay, seeing none, we will move into the budget portion, uh, the purchase of the vacuum truck for the wastewater collection division. Uh, this is a budgeted item, we bid it out. Um, I have nothing further to say. It's just on here because of the dollar amount? Yes. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, we did um, compete against the different manufacturers for initially the vacuum truck because you got it, or the vacuum unit because you have to determine that before you can find the cabin chassis. So we um, solicited all the manufacturers that were on Florida Sheriff's Association, determined that unit, and then found out what um, cabin chassis were compatible. So uh, the, the best um, solution was presented to you. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Marion Pace, procurement manager for the record. Hello, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Any questions for procurement or utilities? No, I'm not approval. Under the... Thank Do you. We have a second. second. Have to, okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the purchase. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, and now we have award for of agreement for outsourcing of merchant. Services. Marion Pace, for the record, we went out for a request for proposals for a um, credit card um, system for accepting credit card payments for our various um, fees. One of the contingencies of the re uh, requirement of any bidder, they had to be able to be successfully currently interfaced with SunGuard, which is our financial system. We received two solicit or uh, two um, submittal packages: one from AMS, one from Paymentus. Um, in the initial review of their written response and apparently meeting all the um, requirements, the Evaluation and Selection Committee <clears throat> did select AMS. However, after a few weeks, it was determined that they were not currently interfaced with SunGuard and they weren't sure when that would happen. So in lieu of us rejecting them as being non-responsive, 
they withdrew from the competition, which left us with Paymentus. We entered into negotiations with Paymentus um, as they are currently interfaced and they are a preferred provider for um, SunGuard systems. And this is the agreement that we negotiated. And how many years is this for? It's uh, initially for five years. They are willing to hold the um, fees fixed unless um, Visa or MasterCard or Discover adjust their cost. Um, however, I did receive an email from our representative and that has not happened and they have not had to increase their rates um, for several years. Questions for Chris? Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion a second to approve the award to Paymentus. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried <clears throat> unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Mayor. Yes. Sharon Nippenberg, controller. If I may, I just want to make it clear to everyone that this was brought to the council as a suggestion last year and the council had asked us to pursue it. In the budget, we were budgeting approximately fifty to sixty thousand dollars to pay the credit card fees. And by going out to bid and getting it competitively priced <clears throat> and getting it as low as we possibly could, that fee will no longer be paid by the city, but those who choose to use a credit card to make payments to the city will pay a service fee. And so when they go online to pay, it will show this is the amount that you owe. If you choose to use your credit card, this is the fee that you will pay directly to Paymentas. The money does not come to the city. We do not make anything off of this. It's purely a pass through. And we will do everything we can to get the education process out there and make everybody fully aware of it so that there hopefully won't be any surprises. But I think it was a very good move mm -hmm. that the council endorsed, so thank you for that. Yes. Um, I just want to let everyone know that if you do automatic withdrawal, it doesn't cost you any fee, just so. From a checking account. Just throwing account. that out there. <laughs> yes, we do appreciate anyone that will sign up for automatic withdrawals from their checking right. account. It's very efficient for the city and very low cost right. for the mm -hmm. taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> now we're going to get set up to do the uh, budget presentation. Yes. Um, many of this information, much of this information you have seen before. We're just updating you prior to um, when we put the proposed budget finally together. This has nothing to do with the general fund or Burnstar Isles Canal Maintenance. That will be July 6th. There is one item on here that our controller is going to uh, ask for a, uh, a discussion regarding uh, our utility fund. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's frozen. <laughs> Oh, it woke up. I guess we let it sleep too long. Mm -hmm. Again, Sharon Nippenberg, controller for the city. We are going through an update of the budget. These were presented in April, and this is just the final uh, status before we uh, begin the process in July of setting assessments and the millage rate. Punta Isles Canal Maintenance District, um, we met with the advisory board. They are recommending that we maintain the current $550 assessment. If you agree with that, we will be bringing that to you at the July 13th meeting. Um, they do have a balanced budget. They um, would like to begin funding a seawall replacement reserve. You'll see that in the uh, pro forma when we show that next. There is an anticipation that <clears throat> at some point, and right now we have it in 2018, that doesn't mean when we get there next year, that it will be necessary. But at some point, we will need to put in an assessment in anticipation of lost staging sites and therefore an, a substantial increase in the cost of doing seawall replacement. You'll be encouraged to know that staff is also pursuing alternative ways to build seawalls. And so when we get to that critical point, we may be able to say we have a different type of seawall, a different process, and maybe this won't be necessary. But we wanted to be prudent in planning for the future. 
This is the pro forma showing a $550, that's the single family rate assessment and showing that we can increase uh, the amount of seawalls that we are doing and that was based on increasing the assessment last year of $50. So we will not only be able to stay up with the current costs of what seawalls are, but we will actually be able to expand uh, several hundred linear feet in the amount of seawalls that we can do. Yes, sir. Sure. When do you expect that uh, that staff will be able to bring to City Council these the, the, the discussions that you're having with the two canal advisory boards about the alternate materials? Have um, you reached that point yet, or when can we expect to see something? I'll let Rick address that. For the record, Rick Keeney, Director of Public Works. Uh, we have this on our monthly agenda with both Ponte Isles and Burnt Store Isles. What we did is we started with a list of all the ideas and we keep bringing them to um, the committee meetings and narrowing the list, if you will, and uh, trying to focus in on areas that they, they would like to pursue. Um, it's still probably gonna be several more months, but uh, it is something we're actively doing every month. We bring it to them every month. We're trying to refine the list and then at that time we'll bring it to city council and see if uh, you like the ideas or not. Is, is there any excitement about any particular <coughs> area of uh, alternate? Well, uh, one of the areas, and, and everything has pros and cons, and that's what we're working out. Uh, there's a composite sea, sea wall material, and you can see it right off the hotel here when we redid the harbor walk in front of it. It's a composite material, and uh, you can either, so it's light, you can, you can carry it to the backyards. Uh, but we want to make sure it's a mm -hmm. it's a good product and, and it but it is uh, you can get it the gray color so it does look like the color of concrete and uh, but it's it's like a interlocking yeah, yeah. type material you can put it in front of the existing seawall which sounds great but then the problem is you come to a dock then what do you do so these are the little things that we've got to figure out <coughs> how how we still keep the aesthetics so our community looks nice but also functions properly. So that's one that we're researching further is the composite Great. material. Um, there is debate back and forth about using, you know, buying up vacant lots. It's got a lot of, a lot of cons, but it's got some pros. You know, uh, the biggest con is that staging area. It was always there beside somebody's house forever and ever. Yeah. So that's, that's the big con to that. Um, so, uh, you know, we've looked at everything from getting a big crane and trying to you know, move it between homes, you know, the seawall panels, but it would take up the whole road. It's not, it's, it's not going to work. So okay. there's just a long list of stuff and, and it's not, it's not stuff. You got to research each one to see is it going to work? Is it not going to work? So we are refining the list. We plan on hopefully bringing it to you, but it's, it's going to be, an, it's going to be months. Okay. okay. When is our contract up? Our current contract? It, we will have a new contract next spring. Yeah, I would encourage you to come forward as quickly as you can because some of the discussions I know at the Burnstone Isles um, Canal Advisory Committee and the budget that, w that we will discuss, um, this has a significant impact on the, t the new technology, mm -hmm. has a significant impact on what strategy might be deployed and um, so thank you for pursuing that but keep it coming as fast as you can. Yes. <coughs> Any other questions on PTI? Mm -hmm. Sanitation is next. Uh, we discussed sanitation at length at the last council meeting and at this point there is a proposal in place for an alternative service delivery using fully automated multi-packers. Um, that will be brought to you at a later meeting and show you exactly the rollout plan. But the pro forma is based on that. It's important to know that we are balanced for fiscal year 2017 excluding the recycling contract. You may recall a year ago, we had a rather aggressive recycling contract put in place and it calls for rate increases each year of approximately $81,000. That is not sustainable by our current rate. So we began last year with the rate increase for that and we are <coughs> proposing that that also be in place this year. We cannot dip into reserves to do that for more than one year so since we know this is going to go on for the next four years, we do have a small rate increase for that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. 
So we're proposing 75 cents per month, the single family rate change. Um, and then in the out years, it's a little bit less, it's 60 cents per month. So that covers the carts and the recycling? This covers recycling only. Okay. Uh, the cart program, we have other methods to show you when we come back in August. Okay. It, it does not include a rate increase. Um, going back to the points, um, we had recommended last year beginning an establishment of a capital outlay reserve program for the future year. We, we already have the reserves in the bank right now to purchase four packers this year, um, but we were struggling with what to do in four years when we need more packers. Um, we're going to delay that capital outlay, and that was to assist in being able to pay for the carts and the, and the increased cost of the multi-packers. So we will be delaying that. And then we, we will um, plan on drawing down on our reserves and using, uh, we'll have a, a very small reserve for one year, but we believe that that, with a stable revenue source that we have, we believe that that would be okay. And then we'll be able to build it back up and by the time we have to purchase additional packers, we'll be back in a position of being able to do that. So this, this right here, the numbers at the top with the revenues have the rate increase built in there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we would be bringing that uh, ordinance change to you in uh, September for the recycling. And so that's what it will look like. Uh, it would be 1995 this year and next year it would be $20.70. Building fund. Um, as you can imagine, with the growth that we have right now, uh, the building fund is sustainable with its current revenues, even in light of having to have added an, an additional inspector and uh, moving a clerk to full time this year. We have been slowly replacing their fleet um, in 2019. If the growth continues, the modest growth, we would expect that we will be in a position again of uh, being concerned about the delivery service and the waiting lines. And we would, uh, the 19 budget reflects, um, a, again, an additional inspector and a clerk and, and one new fleet. Uh, we will monitor that each year and we will address it. Obviously, we try to be very responsive, even if it's a mid-year adjustment, so that the building community does not suffer for us having lack of staff. Any questions? We, uh, we are not proposing any changes in fees. Uh, the, the small reserve that they have been able to build up, we know will be necessary if there's a decline in the economy because those services will still be needed even if there's not one new house. Any, any level of, uh, a credit, I call it accreditation, but it's actually the review of building inspectors licenses reviewing any remodels, any replacements of AC systems. <coughs> you have to have that core staff in place to maintain that integrity. Um, and that's about it, if you have any questions on the building. Questions? Nope. The Marina Fund we addressed briefly at a previous meeting also because you had asked for a, re a review of rates and it was proposed to make some modest changes to stay competitive and to be able to offer a level of service that we would like to have for a waterfront boating community. So this budget reflects that. Um, it is sustainable. We are showing it balanced, most importantly, with a continued grant for the pump out boat. You can imagine operating a 300, <coughs> excuse me, a $350,000 boat uh, is not something that a small fund could normally do. So we really have appreciated and need the grants from MAC and uh, from uh, D DEP. <clears throat> we, we did lose a grant this year. Uh, they've, they understood that that was rather devastating for us because um, we had to go back to the drawing board on a few things. So they are allowing us to um, submit again and we believe this time they'll look at us favorably. Cherry works hard on that for us. Which group is that? That was MAC. Okay. So they initially denied us? Yes. Oh, MAC? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, but we're back on the approval. We're back. Okay. We're back. We're back on the approval. We're back on Mac. Okay. Yes. Back on Mac. <laughs> uh, some of the things that uh, our our uh, manager has asked us to consider, and uh, with the rate changes we are able to do for him, uh, the golf cart needs to be replaced. Um, they've asked for connectivity. This will be good both for the city and for the users. So we'll be able to offer Wi-Fi out on the boats. Um, but we will also have a connection between the marina and the city. That is something that has been greatly lacking. And so we do things quite archaically in, in the way of accounting and deposits. So we're looking forward to that change with the assistance of the IT department. Um, the washers and dryers are getting old. Uh, Rusty and his staff actually keep them running. But I'm, I'm anticipating one of these days they're going to give me a bill for a new washer dryer. Uh, he's asked for a, a reinspection of the mooring field. You know, with the salt water, all of those connections down there can become um, not reliable. Mm -hmm. um, we also are looking at some work on the docks. Um, we have galvanized steel fittings, and he's asking us to look at stainless steel. So we're going to compare both prices and deal with that in the upcoming budget year. Um, the dredging is something we are not sure of, quite honestly. It's a little out of my expertise, <coughs> but at least we have two canal funds. We'll be looking to them for a little help in identifying at what point in time will the silting require us to dredge. We don't want to be caught by surprise, so it is also in the performa. I believe we've addressed everything we can in anticipation of, of an it's still a new marina, but in terms of the salt air, it is an aging marina. So that is, um, that's what you see in the pro forma here. The, because it's, oh, sorry. Um, because it is its own enterprise fund, if we find that some of those uh, amounts that we set up are not needed, they will go into a reserve and they will remain there for the, for the use. Yes. Do we have any reserves or any funds set aside for the maintenance of the Gilchrist Landing area? Gilchrist Landing is by the Bayfront Center? Yeah. No. Is That's general fund. <clears throat> That's general fund, okay. That's general fund. Okay. That has nothing to do with the marina. Okay. Right. Utilities fund. Um, we had brought this uh, pro forma to the advisory board and they have accepted it and recommended to you for approval. <clears throat> the interesting thing of note here is with this, with this uh, succeeding and getting the 50% grant, the proposed 4% for three years in a row increases in utility rates will be able to be reduced. So we have the first 4% in place in 2016 we are now looking at reducing those to 2% in 2017 and 2% in 2018. We believe those will mesh with actually when we have to begin paying a debt service on the construction of the RO plant. Um, this is, however, an opportunity to look at something that the city has felt was important but not affordable, and that would be automated meter reading. As you know, we um, used to have an inside staff that did the meter reading. It was a very difficult job, great turnover. We went to a contractual basis, and it's interesting, even though they're a national firm that say they do it, know how to do it, do it well, we're experiencing the same difficulties with them. There's a great deal of turnover. It's a very tough on our staff who are very used to knowing. We put the bills out very much on time every month, people in the community can count on a regulated bill that reflects just four months of reading. It doesn't happen when there's a lot of turnover. We know that the county is now pursuing automated meter reading. We would like the opportunity to at least explore the pricing, explore whether that would be an efficiency and a long-term solution for a very real problem. And so we're looking to the city council to give us direction on whether we can take that to the utility advisory board and pursue it. It would mean that we would need to retain that 2% rate increase. I think it's worthy of discussion for sure because now is the time. I'm sure the technology is better. I mean, 
basically will be the only ones out there reading meters. I mean, everything else has gone automated and it's actually a benefit to the homeowner or the business owner. I mean, my husband had a vacant building and the toilet was running and he did not know. And, you know, until he got the $600 water bill, he did not know that the water was literally going down the drain. And so I think for conservation and there are benefits to the homeowner, you know, real time, your water usage, I think we should definitely explore it. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely agree. Uh, the technology is there that we should take advantage of it. Uh, we had a neighbor that had a, a, a leaking irrigation system that caused them to, you know, using up 32,000 gallon, gallons of it's water. It's significant. And they didn't know it until they got the bill.